We can now move on with the examination of item 7 on the draft plan for the use of the resources of Intangible Cultural Heritage Fund in 2018-2019. Many of the achievements by the committee and the secretariat over the past two years have been made possible thanks to the Intangible Cultural Heritage Fund to which the state parties contribute year after year. Our functions as a committee are laid down in Article 7 of the Convention. And one of them is to propose and one of them is to propose for the approval of the General Assembly a draft plan for the use of the resources of the fund. Since we are meeting here in the year before the next General Assembly, we need to examine the spreading plan for the next two years as prepared by the Secretariat. I now pass the floor to Mr. Tim Curtis, who will present this document to us. Mr. Secretary, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, allow me uh, just to uh, preamble, if you will, uh, before starting that the working document 7 is made up of two main sections. The first is about the past, and it is the report on the implementation of the fund from the 1st of January 2016 until the 30th of June 2017. And it has a detailed analysis on past expenditure trends explaining the current situation of the fund. The second part is about the future, uh, and it is a proposed draft plan for the use of the resources for the, uh, for, of the fund for the next biennium and the first six months of 2020, since, as you know, the, G the General Assembly meets in June. Uh, the document, of course, includes two important annexes that contain most of the information detailed in the first two sections of the document. Annex 1 is the draft plan for the use of the resources of the fund, and Annex 2 is a financial statement on the use of the fund issued by the Bureau of Financial Management for the period of January 1, 2016 to 30th of June, 2017. So if you'll allow me, I'll take you now through the part concerning the past and how the fund was used. The total income of the fund is based on assessed contributions, voluntary contributions, as well as interests generated. So during the 38 C5 biennium, the total of the income of the fund was four, four US dollars which is 15% lower in relation to the previous biennium. This decline is the result of the drastic reduction of the voluntary supplementary contributions which we just discussed under the previous item 6. It's by its resolution 6GA9, the General Assembly approved a budget of 7,977,920 United States dollars for the period of 1st of January 2016 to 31st of December 2017. As we can see in Annex 2 and Financial Statement 1, as at, as at June 30, 2017, the total expenditure was 2,769,000 United States dollars, a 35% of the total budget approved. We will have the time to analyze in detail the reasons beyond this persistent low expenditure rate when I come to present some of the past trends. So in the meantime, let us study this financial statement one in a little bit of details. According to the budget approved by the General Assembly in 2016, the majority of the resources of the fund, 59%, were dedicated to budget line one, which is the line for international assistance. As of 30 June 2000, as of June 30, 2017, the expenditure rate of this budget line was 19.7% and is expected to rise to around 26% by the end of this year as new contracts have materialized since the end of the reporting period and notably too with Cambodia and Morocco. And two projects have recently been approved by the Bureau for Niger. 
Regarding budget line two, during the reporting period, four states received technical assistance for the preparation of international assistance requests, which represents an expenditure rate of 6.9%. Furthermore, the Bureau approved a preparatory assistance for nomination to the urgent safeguarding list uh, after the reporting period for Namibia. And once this contract materializes, the expenditure rate of this budget line will go to 9%. And here again, we note a dramatic underutilization of this fund. Uh, budget line three, the other functions of the committee, which we talked about earlier, was at 60% at the date of financial reporting, June 30, 2017, is currently at 89%, and we expect to reach above 95% uh, by the end of the year, by the end of this month. Uh, more detailed information on the activities are, uh, are found in the document 5D in the report of the Secretariat, uh, which I reported to you this morning. Budget lines four, five, and six corresponds to financial assistance given for participation of experts and non-governmental organizations in the evaluation body and in sessions of the committee. While budget line seven corresponds to the fees of the members of the evaluation body and the fees paid to, chair, to the chairperson and the rapporteur of the body for the additional tasks they perform. The expenditure rate of this line uh, uh, necessarily cannot be complete as we need to have a margin in order to establish the contracts of the members of the evaluation body at the beginning of the evaluation cycle next year, uh, so before the General Assembly approves, for the period before the meeting of the General Assembly. Um, so finally, budget line eight corresponds to the reserve fund which was established and which has now reached an amount of one million for this, bien this biennium and according to decision 10 com 8 at one million the reserve fund will stop getting uh, replenished. So no more allocations will go to the reserve fund. So what I have explained is not a new situation but it is a recurrent trend as discussed in section 1D of the document. As you can see from the graph displayed on the screens over the years the level of expenditure has been constantly lower than the assessed contributions due for the biennium. Since unspent balances are added to the assessed contributions, the total budget keeps growing from one biennium to the next. The insufficient use of international assistance and technical assistance mechanisms by states party is and has been the main cause of this trend over the past several cycles. Those are budget lines one and two. Indeed, efforts by the Secretariat to improve the use of these mechanisms did result in a recent increase in expenditure compared to previous biennia, but the expenditure rate remains proportionally low and well below half of the assessed contributions. If states continue to underutilize the resources of the fund, of course, this trend will just continue and the total budget will keep increasing in future cycles. The problem will clearly not go away if we don't have a strategy to address it. And at a time when UNESCO is facing severe financial constraints, when our own extra budgetary resources we've just seen have completely dwindled, it seems incomprehensible, and you will surely agree, to have such a fund that is not being fully utilized. So allow me now to go to the sec second part, which concerns the future. And again, please refer to Annex 1. So in Annex 1, you have the draft budget for a period of 24 months, 2018 to 2019, plus the first six months of 2020, because as I explained, we still have activities in those first six months that need to continue um, to be approved by the General Assembly uh, in the upcoming session, the seventh session in June of 2018. Uh, we calculate the budget for the first six months of 2020 based on a, a quarter 25% of the total biennium approved budget. So for the period of 1st of January 2018 to 31st of December 20, 000, uh, 2019, sorry, the amount of the spending plan to be submitted to the next session of the General Assembly is, is estimated to be approximately 8.3 million. So this time, the Secretariat's proposal includes the creation of a subline 
in the spending plan to enhance human resources in order to improve the implementation of the international assistance mechanism. This is proposed specifically to address the problem of systematic underutilization of international assistance. And since this is a new proposal, I hope you don't mind if I take a few minutes to explain the context of such a proposal. First of all, I'm pleased to report and to be able to report that there are, po there are several positive points that I can highlight in the way international assistance has been administered. Since the establishment of the PREACH procedure, 39 state parties had been granted financial assistance from the fund for a total of 3.7 million and in support of 69 projects. It is encouraging to see that 63% of the requests approved were submitted by states parties from Electrical, Electoral Group 5A, Africa, representing 2.23 million of assistance granted. This is, of course, in line with UNESCO's global priority for Africa. The significance of international assistance as the operational window of the convention has been stressed in many instances. The mechanism enables a comprehensive and realistic picture of the safeguarding priorities and actions of states. The states, the projects implemented through international assistance also have the potential to supply a major learning tool for the committee on the implementation of the convention, for example, as a repository of good safeguarding practices from which others can learn. So the Secretariat has been reviewing our working methods and making efforts in optimizing the way we handle international assistance. And I'm pleased to report that during this biennium, we were able to increase by 40% the number of international assistance files presented to the attention of the Bureau in comparison with past biennia. However, I, I need to point out, while this increases the result of an intensification of work concerning the processing of requests, just to get the process approved by the Bureau, what remains is the important workload which happens after that, related to in the establishment of contracts, the, the establishment of payments, the monitoring of progress, the work we have to do with the state party once the financial assistance is received to make sure the project actually gets implemented. So while we've increased in the last year by 40% the amount of approvals we've processed, this creates extra work in, in setting up those approvals and getting them working. So it's not something we can just sustain at the same rhythm by keeping increasing. Every time we increase an approval, we also have to follow through with getting the project going and working with the state party. Um, and so I'd like to point out that the monitoring that we do at this stage involves mainly budgetary and administrative monitoring. And we're missing out in this way on opportunities that uh, this operational mechanism of the convention could, could offer in terms of learning. Substantive monitoring of the projects should be an important dimension in the implementation of international assistance as it could help states parties to create favorable conditions for safeguarding ICH in both the shorter and longer terms. An in-depth analysis and comprehensive evaluation of the results and impact of the projects could be highly useful for understanding the effective implementation of international assistance and a promising means of informing the overall implementation of the convention. Of course, this would require a substantial investment in terms of time and resources from the Secretariat. Dear committee members, the involvement of the Bureau and the Secretariat in the implementation of the international assistance mechanism is expected to grow as we have already witnessed with the increased ceiling of the assistance examined by the Bureau from 25,000 to 100,000. So in a basic sort of business model sense, by increasing the sp scope for demand, it is also necessary to increase the ability and capacity to supply that demand. And it is, the, it is very clear at this stage that the Secretariat's capacity simply does not allow for more than the basic uh, administrative follow-up um, and not the substantial monitoring as I've mentioned earlier. So with regard, um, so as, you, as we've mentioned before, the section of the Secretariat, the ICA section is composed of eight professional and four general fixed-term staff. 
This is a 20% decrease since 2010, in a moment when the obligations on core statutory processes, preparing statutory meetings, including draft documents, documents supporting evaluation body with its work, treating nominations, non-governmental organization requests for accreditations, reviewing and following up on periodic reporting, open-ended working groups, and so on, all these other functions and then let alone capacity building are just increasing in demand. And we have reduced by 20%. Uh, so nowadays the Secretariat has no other solution than to turn to temporary assistance to cover some of these functions. With regard to international assistance, the roles and responsibilities are divided among several staff, fixed and temporary, uh, over and above their primary responsibilities. So this is why the draft plan proposed includes a new budget line, 1.1, to cover the biennial costs of two new extra budgetary fixed term posts at a P3 and G5 level to form a team dedicated to fully activate the international assistance mechanisms and effectively monitor and evaluate its implementation, which is so much needed. Uh, the creation of extra budgetary fixed term posts is proposed so as also to ensure stability and continuity of the results. And so uh, budget line 1.1 should also form part of future plans. But of course, the funding of such posts will be continued as will the overall budget, subject to approval at each General Assembly. As you can see, um, we have Annex 1 on the screen. This li budget line would mean around 5.4% of the total estimated budget for the next biennium. To absorb this new percentage, slight decreases are proposed in certain budget lines without risking the objectives of any of them. It is also worth mentioning that the interest received on the balance of the fund uh, for the next year would cover or initially 40% of the costs of these two posts. So allow me now to turn to other parts of the proposed spending plan. Budget line one will be assigned once more with the greatest allocation, this time at 54.85%, and uh, the slight decrease of 4.15% in relation with the current plan will be dedicated to cover most of the newly created budget line 1.1. Budget line two, which is the preparatory technical assistance, also being highly underutilized, only at 9% implementation rate uh, in the last biennia, will decrease one point in percentage from 5.5 to 4.5. Once again, this is used to cover the creation of the two new posts and in order to work on improving the uh, low utilization of these mechanisms. Budget line three is the budget line for other functions of the committee, which we've already discussed today, and is proposed to be maintained at 20%. Uh, as previously approved by the committee, the funds allocated to this budget line will be specifically dedicated to capacity building program and all the global upstream work that needs to be happening there. Uh, the integration of ICH into development plans, policies, and programs, and as we have discussed with a focus on ICH and education, and I remind this, up, this budget allows us to do the upstream work which then generates projects. Improvement in the management of the knowledge, information and monitoring of the convention, and this is very important, includes key things like our ability to supply all the online information related uh, to statutory meetings and so on, uh, and the databases that have been generated over time, and of course, the, to promote the objectives of the convention through the awareness raising and outreach which we discussed earlier. Allow me also to remind committee members that this line is dedicated to upstream work at the global level which allows then for the implementation of projects and programs at national and regional levels through extra budgetaries. Uh, budget lines four, five, six and seven will be maintained in general at their respective Percentages with light, slight changes in order to be better aligned with coming obligations. Uh, I'll come back to this because, in fact, the Secretariat itself will have a slight amendment on these issues based on our experience this year. What we will propose is a slight amendment to allow us some flexibility.
to move between the lines. I remind you, these lines are related to the cost of participation of experts, of committee members, of states, non -parties, uh, states parties to the conventions, and accredited NGOs. And what we have found because of, uh, first of all, we don't know where the committees are being held and what the exact costs are and what the demands are. We will be asking for flexibility between the lines so that we know we can use them all. So what we have in one year is one category is full up, and then we have two minutes. So this year we were not able to meet enough demands of developing countries to attend the committee while we had, an, we had funds remaining in the line for committee members or for NGOs. So we, we would like to be able to make sure all the funds are used effectively by having some. Uh, that will come later. So what would be the implication? Uh, considering this new scenario, if the draft plan is approved eventually by the General Assembly, the objective pursued by the Secretary is to reach an optimum level when the total budget approved equals assessed contributions and expenditures. We need to try to get the, the fund working back where it's intended to. It's been getting bigger over the years so that we can have a fund that's a recurrent fund. I think it was mentioned earlier. We're not getting extra budgetary money. But it's difficult to request extra budgetary money when donors see a fund that's not being utilized without understanding that this fund has to go through all of these mechanisms. So we are in a, in a real bind here. Um, so that we've got a graph here that shows that if we can increase, uh, first of all, the assessed contributions will increase. And if we get new state parties, of course, they increase. We are aim to increase particularly budget lines one and two by 40% over the next two biennium, and then sustain that. So that means next biennium, if we can manage to increase by 40, the biennium after by 40, that's four years ago, and we sustain it, it will still take us some sort of 14 years until the 44 C5 before we get back to the situation we want to be in, where the assessed contributions are being maximally used. So. If we don't address this problem soon, it's only going to get worse. Um, they're, they're, you know, and so, so that's the situation I present to you. So allow me to talk about the two amendments we want to propose based on the requests uh, we received. They, uh, we are proposing two new paragraphs in the decision. They were not included in the document because, as I said, it, it relates to f issues we, we face this year concerning the process of granting financial assistance to experts from developing state parties, NGOs, representative NGOs, to participate in the decisions of the committee. Uh, we're recommending you now to try to make a, an efficient as possible service to as many developing states and NGOs so that they can participate in the deliberations, as well as to clarify procedures by the Secretariat. In recent years, the Convention has been reaching near universal rat ratification, and we are receiving more and more uh, requests to cover participation for state parties, experts to the committee. And so this year the demands exceeded the available resources allocated uh, and it's the second time uh, for this purpose and for the second time in, the, in a row and more than last year. So last year was the first year where we didn't have enough resources to meet all the requests and this year we had to refuse more requests. At the same time, the budget allocation pertaining to financial assistance for participation of committee members and representative NGOs was, remained partially unused. In total, about 25% of all the funds allocated to these three lines remained unused during the last biennium. So with 175 state parties, 164 accredited NGOs, and a committee that we don't know where it's going to be held, um, it is, uh, you will understand, very difficult to predict exactly which amount needs to be allocated under which of these specific lines and therefore the new paragraph 8 is proposing to allow us to make transfers up to an equivalent of 30 percent of the three lines so that we can optimize uh, their use. Finally, paragraph 9 is a proposal to amend rule 5.5 of the rules of procedure in order to revise the deadline by which requests for assistance from state parties uh, to participate in the sessions of the committee and this bureau should reach the secretariat from four to eight weeks. And the reason, um, because first of all, we've been applying this informally since 2014. 
We've applied an earlier deadline than the one specified in Rule 5.5, and we've always informed the state parties of this in invitation letters. The reason we do so is the, the, the deadline in, uh, stipulated in Rule 5.5 is impossible to abide by the administrative regulations of UNESCO, according to which tickets need to be booked no later than three weeks prior to the departure date. In light of the large number of requests received by the Secretariat, uh, not only does the deadline of Rule 5.5 not allow us to abide by international administ administrative, internal, sorry, administrative rules, but it does not give enough time to even respond to all the requests we've received. Uh, an earlier deadline also ensures we can cover the costs of more experts as tickets prices tend to be lower when booked well in advance. So the proposed amendment is seeking to rectify the tension between Rule 5.5 of, uh, of the Rules of Procedure and the Administrative Regulations of UNESCO. Um, I'm nearly finished, but before ending, I'd like to bring to your attention some figures on the state of uh, compulsory assessed contributions as of November 27, uh, 24 of this year. As you know, Article 26 of the Convention states that without prejudice to any voluntary supplementary contribution, state parties to this convention undertake to pay into the fund at least every two years a contribution to be decided by the General Assembly, which in no case shall exceed 1% of its contribution to the regular budget of UNESCO. By 24 November, 40% of the contributions due for 2017 remain unpaid, as at that date was $879,928. I, also mention, I shall also mention that 15% of the state parties of the convention did not make any contribution during this current biennium. I have come to the end of my presentation. I hope that I have provided all the information that the committee members would require to examine this important item. I remain, of course, at your disposal to answer any questions, and I'm happy to be here. Uh, together with the Administrative Officer of the Culture Sector, Mr. Abdelghani Bakrim. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary, for the detailed explanation of the use of the resources of the Intangible Cultural Heritage Fund since 1st January 2016, and for the presentation of the plan for the use of its resources for the next period 2018-2019 that include important and necessary changes for the improvement in the implementation of the fund in coming cycles. Before plunging into adopting the draft plan and the decision, I'd like to open a general debate and give the opportunity to members of the committee to raise their questions, which I will ask the Secretariat to answer after the debate. Allow me just to recall that in accordance with Article 5, Period 1 of the financial regulations of the fund, the use of its resources is based on the guidelines laid down in Chapter Roman 2.1 of the Operational Directive approved by the General Assembly. Now the floor is open. Uh, Turkey first. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, let me first thank the Secretariat for the report and the extensive briefing. And uh, we heard the two items that you are proposing. Um, I mean, we welcome the idea, but I think we need to reflect on them. If it would be good, maybe if you can uh, reflect on the screen. Uh, the proposals that you will be uh, making to the decision. Um, having said this, as emphasized in the previous agenda item, uh, though there is some improvement, we continue to note with concern that, the f but that while the fund continues to grow, but underutilized at the same time, extra budgetary funds to the ICH fund for capacity building programs, as well as to the sub-fund for the human resources of the Secretariat, continues to diminish. As a remedy to this problem in the short term, access to that fund has been improved by giving authority to the Bureau for approving international assistance requests from 25,000 
US dollars to 100,000 US dollars. However, it could not be considered as a permanent solution uh, for the following re reasons. First of all, this does not address the issue of monitoring of the funds from the perspectives of both finances and intangible cultural heritage. Access to the international assistance have been eased both in terms of scope and rules, but provisions related to supply or delivery still remains to be addressed. Secondly, access to funds by raising the financial limit of the Bureau for approving international assistance requests from 25,000 to 100,000 US dollars oversteps the role of the Bureau. In particular, in line with the recommendations of the ad hoc working group uh, on governance regarding the role of the bureaus, we should be cautious in giving such responsibilities to the Bureau. On the other hand, we welcome and support the proposal of the Secretariat to create a new budget line to cover the costs of two extra budgetary fixed term posts who would work for activating the international assistance mechanisms and monitoring and evaluating its implementation. In fact, it would be even more favorable if more than two fixed term posts are allocated for this purpose. But in the meantime, the committee needs to consider a comprehensive long-term approach as it is about to become a chronic problem for the Convention. The committee has to look for solutions that would allow the Secretariat to effectively deliver international assistance to the requesting state's parties. This issue needs to be addressed together with the broader resource mobilization strategy of the Convention in the context of the structured financing dialogue. Accordingly, as we said before, we will propose that ad hoc working group must be mandated to analyze the funding issue as a whole, both underutilized funds as well as the extra budgetary funding. In this regard, as we have said before, we will have some amendments that we will introduce under agenda item 13. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, Ethiopia followed by Philippines. Uh, I give the floor now, Ethiopia. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would also like uh, to thank the Secretariat for the extensive explanation and for sharing issues which need our serious attention. As I have mentioned it in my intervention this morning, uh, this convention has been achieving a lot and is being more and more attractive and this should be very much encouraged. However, the growing workload regarding the international assistance and the resource of the Secretariat doesn't look balanced enough. International assistance mechanisms are very important for our continent. Uh, the assistance Ethiopia has received had helped a lot in developing inventory mechanisms, developing nomination files, and national guidelines for capacity building to create awareness on the convention amongst practitioners. As mentioned in the report of the Secretariat, a very small amount of the available fund was utilized, and this is primarily due to the limited human resources as depicted. While we have unutilized financial resources stuck in the bank, it really doesn't make sense to claim for strain on resources to best affect the Convention. I think we need to understand the everyday reality of the Secretariat capability and decide to best capacitate the ever-growing pattern of demands from the state's parties. In view of achieving more and in view of effectively implementing the Convention, we strongly support the request to open extra budgetary positions. This will enable an appropriate follow-up and monitoring of its implementation and propose measures to help us better benefit from the resource available in the fund. This is only a temporary solution due to its extra budgetary nature, I believe. Although we would have preferred a more sustainable solution, we support the proposed decision given the financial situation of the organization. I thank you. Thank you, Ethiopia. And now I give the floor to yeah, the distinguished permanent delegate of the Philippines. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
We thank the Secretariat for the report under this item. We note with concern that the utilization of international assistance remains slow, although though some improvements have been observed this year. We think that targeted workshops and meetings will be needed to further improve the rate of submission of requests from other regional groups. In this regard, the UNESCO field offices with presence on the ground can be better utilized. We support the initiative to have dedicated staff for international assistance. We note that they shall be funded through extra budgetary resources. However, we would like to inquire as to who are the donors and if these posts cannot be sourced eventually through the regular budget. We can imagine that this post will be required on a permanent basis, but provision of extra budgetary support fluctuates over time and hence may not be able to guarantee their sustainability. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Madam Ambassador. Now I give the floor to Austria. Thank you. Please let us renew our appreciation of the Secretariat's work and its efforts are clearly reflected in the figures in front of us. For instance, when we see that the utilization of the ICH fund in budget lines one and two have considerably increased. Uh, the main reason uh, is of course the increase in the ceiling for international assistance requests that can be presented to the, to, to the Bureau implying, of course, an additional workload for the Secretariat, and it is highly likely that this trend will continue in future cycles as well. However, we agree that there is still room for improvement, particularly as regards international assistance, which is the primary function of the fund according to our operational directives. We understand that further activities to encourage or rather enable state parties to ask for international assistance require additional human resources in the Secretariat. We also understand that the costs for additional posts can, in a short and mid-term perspective, not be covered by cost recovery as generally foreseen for activities related to the fund. We therefore support the proposal by the Secretariat to establish a new budget line for two additional fixed-term posts in order to fully activate the international assistance mechanism and effectively monitor and evaluate the implementation. However, uh, once the fund is more extensively utilized, the staff costs should be covered uh, to an increasing degree from resources stemming from cost recovery. We would like to hear the Secretariat's analysis about how long they assume that these two posts would need to be covered by the additional budget line from the funds and what would happen to the posts should the General Assembly decide in the future, in a future cycle, not to prolong the budget line. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Austria. And uh, I think there are no more speakers on the part of our committee members. Uh, Senegal. Merci, Monsieur le Président. C'est d'abord pour uh, remercier et féliciter le Secrétariat pour le rapport très clair et les explications assez détaillées. Uh, même si on note une évolution qui est quand même une évolution à, à saluer, la situation reste quand même une situation assez paradoxale. Parce que quand nous prenons le cas des pays, euh, des États partis, notamment ceux d'Afrique en développement, euh, les besoins sont énormes. Et il y a une sous-utilisation des ressources qui, qui sont mises à leur disposition. Pourquoi cette situation, d'une part, il y a un problème de ressources humaines, il y a un problème d'élaboration de, 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 de projets, de, de, de programmes euh, aptes à capter ces ressources. D'autre part, il y a également au niveau du secrétariat un problème de ressources humaines également pour traiter tous ces dossiers. Ces deux paradoxes nous amènent à effectivement trouver des solutions. D'une part, le renforcement des capacités dans ces pays, mais d'autre part, le renforcement également des ressources humaines au niveau du secrétariat. Il faut effectivement que le secrétariat puisse traiter de toutes ces questions, puisse avoir suffisamment 
si vous voulez, de ressources pour traiter ces, 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 ces demandes, pour traiter un peu l'afflux de, 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 de besoins exprimés par un plus grand nombre d'États qui ont ratifié cette convention. Pour dire d'une manière très claire que le Sénégal appuie fortement cette proposition de permettre au secrétariat d'avoir deux postes budgétaires à durée déterminée pour pouvoir faire ce travail. Merci. Ok, thank you for all these very relevant and excellent comments. Before I give the floor to delegates of Republic of Korea, I think uh, I'd like to invite at this moment your secretary to respond to some questions raised by our committee members. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair Chairperson. I think in particular there were questions from uh, the delegation of the Philippines and uh, of Austria. Uh, I think uh, perhaps uh, I should clarify to the delegation of the Philippines that this is not funded by donors. The posts are proposed to be funded by the fund under the international assistance mechanism. It is, but these are considered extra budgetary posts in the UNESCO framework, uh, even though they are considered uh, under the, the fund. But we are not proposing to be looking for donors. This is meant to be uh, under the fund. And I think Austria um, asked what uh, would happen should, uh, should a General Assembly not approve this subline sometime in the future. Um, and in that respect, I, I think I'd like to give the floor to the Administrative Officer of the Culture Sector. Thank you. Oui, merci. Mais, mais avant de essayer de répondre à cette question, je voudrais préciser une chose parce que la délégation de l'Autriche aussi a évoqué la, la question de recouvrement des coûts. Alors, si, si vous décidez de, 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 de recommander à l'Assemblée générale la création de ces deux postes, ce sont des postes extra-budgétaires. La politique de recouvrement des coûts ne s'applique pas pour les postes extra-budgétaires. Donc, en quelque sorte, donc, il y aura une diminution de les prélèvements sur cette partie 1. Ça, c'est d'un côté. En fait, donc, on aura une réduction du recouvrement du coût qui va être un petit peu compensée par la ligne 1.1. Pour ce qui est de, pour ce qui est de, de, la, de la décision éventuelle de, de l'Assemblée générale qu'un jour ne décide pas de, de, de renouveler l'extension de, de ces deux contrats, bien évidemment, donc, euh, s'agissant des postes établis, avec des personnels, avec leurs droits, etc. Le moment venu, éventuellement, le secteur s'efforcera de trouver les moyens de les accommoder avec le programme régulier. Mais donc ça, ça hein, donc, euh, mais pour le moment, pour le 39, le 40, c'est 5, la situation est tellement critique que c'est un peu difficile de prévoir de créer ce genre de poste, sinon on l'aurait déjà fait. Merci. Yeah, we have two more speakers, yeah, one from the uh, committee member and uh, another Japan from the uh, observer member. I now give the floor to the distinguished delegate of Republic of Korea. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. The government of Republic of Korea appreciates the Secretariat for presenting the draft plan for the use of Intangible Cultural Heritage Fund in 2018-2019. to My delegation finds the Secretariat's proposal to create two fixed-term posts for international assistance reasonable. Given the increasing workload of the Secretariat with limited manpower, we believe the ever-increasing demand for the international assistance, as well as account accumulating funds allocated for the cause, indicate the need for a viable uh, solution and for the region. We find that it is worth giving it a try. Still, my delegation asks the Secretariat to report to the committee how the strength manpower contributed to the vitalizing the international assistance programs in two years' time, so that 
the committee and the General Assembly can be assured that they had made the right decision by approving this proposal. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Reporter Korea. As the uh, last speaker, now I give the floor to distinguished representative of Japan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we would like to acknowledge the efforts of the Secretariat, and we hope that the resources of the fund, the safeguarding of intangible cultural heritage, would be used effectively. In order to grasp the needs of the submitting states and respond timely, it is not enough to strengthen not only the budget. We also need to reinforce human resources to improve the implementation of the international assistance mechanism. Therefore, Japan would like to support the draft plan, which includes the new budget item listed in Annex 1, 1.1. We also intend to continue working with UNESCO and member states to contribute further to the implementation of the convention. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Japan. Uh, we just have to say the bureau to move on. Uh, yeah. Announcement. Uh, if you want. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are slightly behind the schedule, but it's very yeah, tolerable. Uh, so we have to stop here, and we'll continue uh, tomorrow morning. And uh, before adjourning afternoon meeting, I'd like to invite our secretary to, uh, if they might have some announcements. Uh, just to remind that tomorrow, from tomorrow morning and every morning, the Bureau will meet at 9 a.m., in the Halla Hall on the third floor uh, in order to adjust the provisional timetable if needed. The vice chairpersons from Bulgaria, Colombia, Cote d'Ivoire, Palestine, and Turkey, as well as our rapporteur, Mr. Gabor Shosh, please be there on time so that we can begin promptly. The meeting of the Bureau is, of course, open to observers. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Excellencies, dear colleagues. I declare the afternoon meeting adjourned.